Welcome back to This Week in Bevy. Relationships are a big Bevy feature dropping into the main branch this week. That is one to many relationships, to be precise. A community decals crate was also upstreamed, and the Bevy remote protocol methods continue to grow. In the showcases, we feature GPU collision, flow fields, player controllers, procedural generation, and more, while macros feature in the crates this week as Bevy Butler and Bevy Registration get releases. And first up, we've got Entity Relationships, which get a big step forward this week with 17298, which introduces one-to-many non-fragmenting relationships. This simplifies relationship internals, leading to improved performance and user experience. Concretely, this is a generic version of the parent-child components, which can be implemented as such with the new APIs. Note that the API description in this PR reflects an earlier version of the APIs, but not to worry, there is actually an example now in the Bevy examples, so you can go check that out instead. This work opens up relationships from being only parent-child components to being user-defined or Bevy provided. This includes features like opting new relationships into despawn descendants type behavior. This work is also foundational for the next generation scene UI effort and is the base for a number of follow-up features like improved spawning ergonomics and many-to-many -many relations. And from an end user perspective, events aren't components and you probably don't want to use them as components. For example, you wouldn't want to query for shared references to my event. This can make the component bound on event strange to read, but digging deeper yields a different story surrounding types like component ID. 17.380 removes the component bound without messing with the internals, allowing for space for the continued evolution of those internals. The details around this were part of the motivation for the It's All Components and Entities document, which dives deeper into the nuance here if you're interested. And 16.600 upstreams Bevy Contact Protective Decals, which in turn is based on Alexander Sanikov's talk about rendering in Path of Exile 2. Note that the talk that I just mentioned also includes Radiance Cascades, if you're familiar with that. The technique involves placing a decal on a quad, which will then use the depth buffer to blend the decal with the geometry it intersects, as seen in the demo image. The implementation is surprisingly concise, so if you're interested in rendering, this is a great implementation to go read. And for a couple of quick hits, ambient light is now a component on a camera. There's a new Bevy remote protocol method to mutate a component. Texture atlases are now supported in custom cursors. A new run condition, any match filter, allows the system to run if the query filter has any results. And default is now implemented for state scoped, which should allow more ergonomic state scoped requires in 0.16. And first up for the showcases, we've got an experimental physics-based character controller with procedural animation that is strongly coupled to the physics. This demo seems to include things like wall running, so it'll be exciting to see it get released. And then we've got a first iteration of level of detail for landscapes. The work doesn't yet include textures or shaders and only deals in raw meshes. As you can see here, the meshes get sort of larger as you look further away from the camera. Next up, we've got a child window within the parent window area, rendering a web view. The content here is just a mock-up based on Betty editor prototypes, but it's always an interesting demo nonetheless. Hexroll's HTML content is rendered with HTML5 ever and Betty UI. The HTML then is converted into Betty UI for rendering. Hexroll is a sandbox generator and virtual tabletop for old school D&D. And a collision detection system using compute shaders is this demo. It uses pure GPU computation and utilizes trigger readback complete to access the structured GPU cache for collision detection. And next up, a new building interface and world resource location visualization for Settletopia, which is a multiplayer open world settlement building civilization development game. And this is a caterpillar built with avian physics. The red end of the caterpillar has max friction and the blue end has min friction with a clamp on the angle between them. And this screenshot represents some progress on a space shooter Smash Brothers like game. I do really like the pixel art aesthetic here, so I'm interested to see where this goes. And next up, we've got one, two, and four player split screen. This camera viewport system toggles between dev mode, single player, two player, four player split screen with different input maps for each player. Up next, we've got some retro PSX shaders. Some tests towards making retro PSX style shaders in a number of different demos, including chromatic aberration, noise, scan lines, vignette, and distortion. And this is a procedural generated 2G chunk based world using Perlin noise, wave function collapse, and contextual layers. The source for this one is available on GitHub, and the demo you're watching right now is available on YouTube. This demo is a work in progress flow field pathfinding crate with a focus on visualizing the flow field's behavior for debugging purposes. The debug visualization is actually really quite nice, so I'm looking forward to seeing this get a crate release. And Bevy Foliage Tool is a GPU-based grass shader that integrates with additional editor tooling. While this is a modified Pico 8 game running from its P8 file in a Bevy project, which is temporarily being named Nano 9. Zulatair 1.8 is released with iPad support, a fix for device heating, which we saw in an educational post, 
and a premium subscription for unlimited help. And finally, we've got Bevy Punk's video and audio synchronization. During an upgrade to 0 0.15, Bevy Punk example overhauled video and audio systems using Velu Kinetoscope and Bevy Kira Audio, allowing them to stay synchronized even while playing in a loop and even when each track has different lengths. And we've seen Bevy Prefs Lite before, which is our first crate release. Bevy Prefs Lite provides basic preferences support for Bevy applications. The word preferences in this context is used to mean user settings that are set while running the app, persistent across restarts, and implicitly saved. It's not meant to be a general config serialization mechanism, and preferences typically include things like the current editing mode or tool, keyboard or game controller bindings, and there's a full list of what is and isn't a preference in the README, which I encourage you to read. Bevy iOS Safe Area got a release this week, which is a Bevy plugin that enables querying iOS device safe area insets, that is, the margins. This is useful so that you don't put readable text over the little pips and nibs on the edges of phones these days. And Bevy Fixed Update Task is one of those crates that you'll either get or you'll need to do a little work to understand. Bevy Fixed Update Task provides a version of a fixed time step that doesn't block rendering, allowing game logic to take advantage of Bevy's async tasks to occur over multiple frames. This allows your logic to wait or speed up to catch up irrespective of rendering. This is a notable difference from Bevy's built-in fixed time step, which will block and complete its logic before rendering can take place. It may also be useful to check out the examples in the GitHub repo, which we've linked on the website. And next up, Bevy WebView Rye 0.1. Bevy WebView Rye provides an IPC command, which allows you to communicate between a WebView and a Bevy process. This seems to be integrated with the Flurks ecosystem of crates, which has its own set of functionality as well. And we saw it last week, which generated a bit of discussion. Bevy Butler got its actual release this week. Bevy Butler is a set of procedural macros aimed at reducing plugin boilerplate and making systems more self-documenting by declaring system ordering and scheduling at the system declaration rather than when they're added to an app. And similarly, Bevy Registration also got a release this week, which is a Bevy macro that uses inventory to schedule systems in much a similar way. And finally, we'll close it out with a devlog. This is All Calls CSV, which is a demo of metadata collection in a CLI tool to generate a spreadsheet of all functions. Originally, this was meant for a Bevy application, which is why it's in this week in Bevy. And that's it for this week. As always, we have all of the merge pull requests on the website if you want to check out what got in this week or get involved with any of the issues. I'll see you in the next issue, and I hope you have a great rest of your week.